Zero Accounting Software 2023 credit card reconciliation for month number two and month number three. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, the bank feed file. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me, therefore I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones, the headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the patting is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. We're gonna duplicate those tabs to put our favorite reports in. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. And then we'll right click the tab again and duplicate the duplication. Back to the tab to the middle, opening up the famous balance sheet report. Tabbing to the right, hitting the drop down, hitting the income statement report up for this one. And then we'll change our range on the income statement let's just do the whole year of 2022 on the income statement and then we'll change our range more specifically on the balance sheet so i'm going to go from jan uh 2022 to decem uh 2022 the 31st of it and update it and then to the balance sheet i'm going to now be reconciling for the period end of september so that's our next reconciliation date Let's actually, by the way, let's do it this way. Let's, let's, let's put three months next to each other. So I'm gonna do a custom date range to do that. And I'm gonna go to the uh, drop down and let's go to actually October, the end of October, and then use Zero's really cool uh, date edit layout field down here to, to bring in the prior two months as well. And to do that, I'm just gonna say, add a field up top and I want it to be a date field. And so on the date, I want to bring this one back to September. And so there it is. So September looks good. Let's add another one, another date field. And let's do it with a uh, date up top. And this one's going to be for uh, August, August. So now we've got the current October, September and August. Okay. And so let's update it. And then we've got this super cool report that shows the credit card balances lined up for uh, October, September, and August. Now, last time we did a reconciliation for August, the first bank reconciliation, which is really the only one that causes problems oftentimes with a credit card because you might have that beginning balance issue that you have to deal with. Once we do that, uh, then our balances are usually pretty uh, on target. So if I go into August, 
there's the uh, 522.71, and there's the balance 522.71. There is no difference because we don't have any outstanding uh, checks and deposits uh, because we constructed our books directly from the bank feeds. Let's actually open the bank reconciliation report now, right click it on the tab to the right, duplicating it, and then we'll go to the accounting dropdown and into the reports. And let's open up a bank reconciliation. Bank reconciliation, rec, bank rec. And so we're now gonna be doing this for the following month. So let's first take a look at that month. We'll say drop down. Let's go to uh, the 2022, bring it back to August and the 31st. And then we're gonna go to, let's actually do the 1st of August and then to the 31st, July, August, 2022, 31st. And then this is for the credit card. And the tricky thing here is you just gotta make sure you put a negative for the credit card. So 52271, so negative, negative 522.71. And there we have it, we reconciled everything. So we don't have anything uh, outstanding at this point in time. And so the two things match. It should be the way it should go basically going forward. Let's do the same report. I'm gonna copy it, right click and duplicate it for the month of September. So I'm gonna go and say, now let's do August, September, uh, first to September uh, 30th. And now I'm gonna change the balance to be uh, this is October, September, uh, 717.22. So negative, negative 717.22 and update that report. So there we have it. And notice it should basically tie out pretty much automatically now because we don't have that same beginning balance problem. So this is the amount from the balance sheet. Here's the amount from the balance sheet. If I go back on over credit card 71722 and uh, we're gonna say September uh, 717.22 and uh, that's the amount on the books as well. So uh, everything ties out. Let's go to the first tab just to look at the bank reconciliation process. If I go to the accounting drop down and we go into the bank accounts then we could say, all right, let's go into the credit card and see what has happened. So the account transactions, this is what we have entered that is related to the credit card, but we constructed all these transactions directly from the credit card bank feeds, all except this beginning balance entry. Once we have this entry in, if everything else is being constructed directly from the bank feeds, everything should be uh, good to go. We should be basically reconciled. You can see the first tab over here, there is nothing more to reconcile. We've pulled everything into our system. This is the process of reconciling. And if we looked at our balance as, as of the current time frame, we might tie out uh, to this balance, but you really wanna oftentimes just look at it on the balance sheet and every, period basically tie it out you still kind of want to check this check the reconciliation which you might be able to do as easily as checking the ending balance at this point in time because there's no outstanding checks and deposits being but doing that doing a reconciliation formally looking at the report will help you to have errors that could come up from somehow getting two things input into the system two transactions recorded twice for example or uh, a transaction that was missed if that happens, then of course our balance will be thrown off and we can use our bank reconciliation skills to determine which balance is missing or, or, or duplicated. So uh, if I go back then to the account transactions tab, then I could check all these off. If I had a problem with this, I can go into here and say, okay, this is all the stuff that happened in September. So when I can check this off side by side, I can put these side by side. There's the uh, 84, 45, right? And I can say September, there's the 84, 45, the 119, 31, the 34, 99, the 11, 97, and the 219, 26 should be over here. 
as well. Uh, having trouble going back and forth. So, so there's the 8449, the 11931, the 3499, and the 1197, the 21926, and then the payment of the 27547, which ties out to the payment of the uh, the, the 27547 over here. And that's why basically everything is reconciled. We don't need to do anything else in order to see that reconciliation process. It's basically taken care of for us. Let's just do the last one. So our report then here shows the balance in zero and then no outstanding items, which ties out to the calculated bank balance and there's no discrepancy. Now let's just do the, the last report just to see the last one. If I right click and duplicate this again, then we can take a look at this for October, October 1st to October uh, 31st. And then I'm gonna say that this is gonna be the ending balance of 90095. So negative 900.95 update. And once again, we should tie out because we brought everything in. It should be that, that easy. Right, we're just we've been doing the reconciliation as we go because we could be creating our books from the bank feeds and we don't have the beginning balance issue. So there's the 995, which is on the balance sheet, which is the uh, the balance sheet over here, uh, 995 right there, and there's no outstanding checks or deposits or inflows or outflows, and therefore our bank balance ties out to our statement balance. If I go to the first tab, just to verify that. I can go to my reconciling tab because this is the last reconciliation. You would think that this would tie out to the statement at this point, the 995 or tie out to your running balance because this is going to be kind of updated as you, you know, add the data as you reconciling, not always like the end of the, the period. See it's statement balance as of October 11th. It might better be called bank balance, I would think of it as, because a statement balance kind of indicates that you're talking about a month monthly statement as of a point in time when the, when the statement ends. And this is kind of a running balance, but it's the bank side of things uh, is the idea. If I go to the accounting transactions and I was trying to tick all this stuff off, these are all the reconciled transactions that happened in October. We had Costco, Costco we had 60, uh, 153, 90, six and we had the uh the payment of the 30996 that should tie out over here where we have let's do this this should be open this way this tab should be over here so 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 there we have the 280 the 60 the 15396 and the 30996 so that's that's how you check everything off right here's the first bank rec where we had this activity we had to add the one thousand dollars then the ending balance the 52271 will be the beginning balance of the next bank statement that's why it's useful to think of these as uh bank statements to look at the actual bank statements which are monthly bank statements because that gives you a a very uh distinct set point of the beginning balance and uh the ending balance so that you can tie out what is the beginning balance. This is where I stood before. That was the beginning balance. Here's the activity increases and decreases to get to the ending balance. If you don't use those distinct dates, then it gets a little confusing if something gets off balance to try to figure out because, because you're kind of floating in the middle of a, a period, right? You need, to, you need to, if you actually look at the statements, then it'll give you a distinct beginning and ending balance. That ending balance is now 71722 is the beginning balance for uh, October. And then we have all the activity that was pulled in from the bank feeds. And because we pulled them in from the bank feeds and used the zero system to pull them from the bank feeds into the financial statements, we of course don't have any outstanding items. So our reconciliation report is quite bland, quite boring, which is fine because it should be quite easy as well. So after we do a couple more transactions on the bank uh, checking account side of things, we'll do a similar process for the checking account 
but the checking account is often for many companies a little bit more difficult because you may indeed have some outstanding uh, payments or outstanding receipts, even if using electronic transfers. You could have some systems where you don't, where it's really easy still, and it would be a similar process, but you could also have some systems where you do have some outstanding items. Those would be systems in which you had to do some accrual component. You had to record the receipt of the payment or the recording of, of the payment uh, in advance and then match it to uh, the zero system using the bank feeds or you'll certainly have outstanding items you would think if you actually write physical checks because then you're going to have that extended period of time that the check will be outstanding likely than having an outstanding reconciling item for the bank reconciliation so we'll talk about those in future presentations.